I feel very privileged that I can come on stage the second time. I hope uh, you're going to be rewarded because I have some, a lot, lot to say. So, um, <clears throat> my slides are actually quite packed, so may not be. Is, is this working? Sorry. Sorry for the hiccup. So, I have to pr press it many times. Okay. So, actually, I'm, I'm really happy that the, the stage is set for me because of Heiko's and, and, and Christian's talk. We, we really didn't even um, um, chat about this, but every, everything kind of converges together. It's, it really looks in, looking very nice. So, what I'm going to talk to you about uh, today is how. Um, you know, certain <clears throat> um, like research and, and uh, ideas about um, peer to, in peer-to-peer -peer networking and, and um, um, this research can be um, um, combined with, with the blockchain and provide some really, really killer uh, infrastructure for, for the next web. So, um, I, I, I really think that uh, what, what, what we need is uh, certain tools uh, for for developers to to uh, kind of think of think of the ethereum infrastructure as as the as the next web so what what do we need for that we we I, we talked about swarm before as um, in the context of serving uh, static files on the one hand uh, with this kind of preferably low latency uh, property and on the other hand that uh, uh, Serving as a kind of backup layer for the the other extreme case, like upload and disappear. That's that's what we call it when um, you upload content and you can just get away and come back after a long time and still find your uh, your uh, content there. So that's that was kind of the bandwidth and storage insurance. So uh, I would like to talk about uh, how how this view can be extended with, uh, with, with you know, further, further tools that the, the, the usual web stack um, um, kind of needs. So the, 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 the take home message from this talk will be that basically I, I would, I'm kind of imagining an, an infrastructure um, which, you know, I mean, I, there's, a, there's a few random brands there, so don't get too carried away if, if you disagree, but it's kind of um, in a few years from now, maybe, maybe these this services can be uh, properly used in production. And I, I would like to introduce uh, three more components into this picture uh, that are not exactly production ready, they are more, mostly like you know, research phase. Uh, so apart from this idea, and, and apart from the uh, three more silly uh, acronyms, the, the, the take-home message is that um, uh, not only static data can be um, uh, served, but uh, we, 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 we can provide some certain tools with, for web developers to deal with the remaining problem for real-time web applications, namely dynamic data, dynamic content. So I, I'm going to approach it from like three angles today. Uh, one is uh, about internode communication. This relates to uh, things like uh, what Heiko mentioned about the Raiden network, this, this, uh, the infrastructure that uh, will, uh, will provide the, the service for, for the payment channel like type internode communication and uh, I'm, I'm going to mention if I have time as, uh, the, the multimedia uh, broadcast uh, like how how certain techniques in in peer-to-peer -peer communication r network research can be applied here and thirdly we, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, database services so what is this all about so internode communication uh, it's basically the question how, so once we have static content, that's all great and fine, but 
what we are used to these days is, is personalized content with, with real-time web applications. So if you, if you go to Facebook, um, then you, you obviously see different uh, news feeds if you if if you you are logged in and then then if I am, and um, some some people in the old generation might not capture this. So when you know when your uncle says that oh look at Facebook and go down the page, then obviously they they don't capture that this this uh, dynamic content is is extremely important. So the first question is how do dynamic content gets around? Uh, the question is like very simple. It's basically using the same sort of routing uh, algorithms that um, we, we, we use in Swarm. Uh, that's, that's based on the, the, the network topology called Kademlia. And, uh, sorry, the wrong way. So, um, in, in, in Swarm, the, that we, we haven't mentioned uh, before, like in detail, that uh, all the files that all the documents that you put up they are basically chunked into little little pieces uh, whatever file you, you, you store they, they chunked into uh, 4k 4 kilobyte uh, little pieces and uh, so uh, you take the, the, the series of chunks of, of, of a document and hash them so you take the, take the hash this this hash is gonna uh, represent the, the address that uh, determines when it's where it's stored in the in the swarm. Now you take the next level, which means that you take um, x number of chunks. In this case, like 128, and uh, consider the hashes or 128 hashes as 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 a chunk itself. So the next level, you package them in a separate chunk, and you go further with this uh, with this story, and you end up with a with a chunking tree. Now, this chunk tree uh, is, uh, has the following properties. It's, it's got integrity protection, because uh, if, even, even with random access, what does that mean? Is that you can basically do range queries in the, in the original content. For example, skip to a part of a movie and still be sure that that particular part or bit in the movie is, is, is what you expect from the, from the single uh, Hash the, the root uh, that you looked up, and that root can be uh, obviously um, recorded in in a in a system like the Ethereum name service that Nick Johnson uh, our team will be talking about. Uh, what um, what it ob obviously also allows is to have uh, really compact Merkle proofs of of. Um, mm, <coughs> of the data, um, which can serve as, as, as the proof of custody for, for the insurance that, that I talked about. Now, why is this all interesting? So uh, if, you, if, you, if you take this uh, one step further uh, and think about the, the, this, this chunk tree as, as basically in this simple case, since, it's, since the branching is 128, you can think of each level as, as basically a dictionary of uh, you know, ASCII characters. So you can address each chunk in a in a full uh, um, you know document as as a as a series of, of ASCII characters. So this this already suggests that you can think of each each file as a as a you, you can you can index certain parts with 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 a character string. Now, if if you if you allow these these tries not to be uh, balanced and uh, and not to be have the same depth, then you, bas you can basically represent any kind of indexes like that, and that's exactly what Swarm does on the top level, which means that you 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 actually um, have these manifest files which uh, map URLs to uh, to um, to uh, assets to to, to 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 documents. So the, uh, so the, in these in these trees of the manifest, you uh, each each leaf node. Represents a document, and each uh, you know path going to to that leaf represents a, a, either a URL or, or say like a, a, a path in a, in a, in directory structure. Now this is not nothing new and not not very interesting. It's it's very similar in, in IPFS, for example. And uh, what what's what's interesting here is that uh, 
once, once the, the, the file is chunked, chopped into these little pieces, then you can, uh, you can uh, use the, 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 the storage mechanism that we, that we um, discussed before, like the, the retrieval and, and syncing process, to, uh, to distribute the, the chunks in a way that's, that's um, securely retrievable and, and can, be, uh, can be found. Now, what, if, you, if, you, uh, if you generalize this, this kind of mechanism that by which this, this thinking process uh, works and the retrieval process works, then you can, f you can see that these are basically general ways to, uh, to, to have like point-to-point -point communication in a, in a network of nodes. So uh, if, you, if you combine this general property of how you, know, how you, co how you communicate between nodes and uh, allow storage, uh, uh, on top of them, then you can basically cover all kinds of cases of uh, data being pushed around, like push and pull, and and you know store or not store. And interestingly, like basically all communications are, are you know boil down to this. I mean, without without pretending that I'm gonna give you like a full semiotic uh, um, uh, analysis of, of all forms of digital communication, but st still, it's really it's really that. That kind of is in a way like you can you can uh, capture all the known communication uh, uh, medium like yeah you, starting from tweets to f like Facebook status updates all the way to email and and, and the chat room basically you can characterize by various properties uh, relating to uh, to you know the internet communication so uh, along the lines of for example, who, who the, 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 the actual uh, message is, is meant to be for, uh, who, uh, whether, whether the message should be delivered or, or re-delivered if the, if the recipient is not found to be online. Uh, so it's, it's, the, it's the same as like, you know, uh, when, when the postal service like re-delivers your package and just leaves a, leaves a note. Or, um, or you can, you can uh, um, uh, classify them uh, according to their confidentiality, and uh, and finally, like all kinds of surface properties, even even including how how they are displayed in terms of like uh, threaded threaded or, or or timeline. And if if you if you do like this this um, this, this classifications, then you can uh, basically uh, implement. Uh, using, this, using the same uh, node communication, you can implement an entire comprehensive uh, communications infrastructure. And uh, what, what we already have uh, the, as, 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 a, as a really important ingredient for this is we can, we can use the, the, the incentivization the same way that, that uh, we explained with SWARM. So uh, you can have incentivized uh, com communication uh, uh, protocols. And you can use very... Um, Various like APIs, like similar to the Whisper API, where you can uh, um, address a particular topic, not necessarily like a particular node. Uh, in which case, you you can subscribe to this, this, those those topics and uh, you know implement a, you know a lot of these interesting uh, communication uh, um, tools. So uh, let's let's go one step further. So. Um, I'm not going to talk about multimedia live broadcast. This is kind of an interesting topic, and this, this research into this direction is relatively immature. So I, I just mentioned that uh, a lot of lot of big companies uh, work around this 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 problem, including Apple, Adobe, and Microsoft. And they, and also, like you have frameworks like WebRTC, which uh, all are trying to solve uh, the problem. That most, 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 mostly the problem that they're trying to solve are solved by by peer-to-peer -peer networks themselves. So uh, there's there's actually interesting ways uh, in which you can uh, efficiently do uh, de delay-sensitive uh, live uh, broadcasting of content. This is uh, using uh, uh, the technique that I I, I termed uh, streaming with adaptive tra transmission channels. So. It's, it's, it's basically a combination of, of uh, multi-bitrate uh, adaptive streaming and, and, uh, and a kind of very interesting adaptive uh, multicast uh, routine, uh, which, which ve is ve very efficient in, in um, 
channeling data towards a set of, a set of uh, nodes, a set of peers, uh, without you know, duplicating a lot of traffic. So uh, thirdly, it's very important, and this, this is where I, I connect to, to uh, Christian's work. So uh, databases, as I mentioned with the, with the manifests, uh, the, 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 the higher level uh, structure of Swarm uh, allows in, an index of you know, arbitrary keys to, to, to arbitrary records, basically like your key value store. So if you, if you um, in, in, already contract, smart contracts uh, allow contract storage, but as we know, like on, on the blockchain, this is both expensive and slow. Uh, and you, you can also uh, uh, use dApps, you, you use like local storage in a browser for, for dApps to store some data, but those are private. So uh, there's, there's an interesting solution where which you can use the, uh, the, the swarm, uh, you know, manifest structure in a, in a, <coughs> in a way that uh, uh, allows you to have uh, like database table definitions. And uh, sorry, I have to skip a few slides here. So, um, so um, you, the manifests uh, are basically used to, uh, to encode and the arbitrary um, key, key value uh, store. And the, the, the Merkle P Patricia tree that is encoded in the manifest is uh, making sure that you can make assertions about uh, in insertions, uh, assertions about like membership in a particular database. And once you, once you have that, and once you have interactive verification of, of, of code, then you, you have an imp incredibly powerful uh, system whereby you can secure uh, the, these, these, these database tables by, by verifiable um, operations. So, for example, if you have a SQL query resolver on top of these, uh, these manifest uh, encoded uh, database tables, then then you can have um, you, you can uh, you can have contracts which which check for 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 certain um, you know your properties of, of, of uh, for example they, they check the validity of of certain indexes or validity of of uh, whether 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 a response to a query is actually uh, uh, correct or not and therefore. Uh, you can have a computational market which uh, complements this, this system by, by providing scalable um, you know, database, database retrieval. And so um, I conclude this by, by saying that the, the, the takeaway message from, uh, from today is that uh, there, there, are, there is research in like these three areas um, and, and these, these, these are three projects that um, we would like to um, uh, you know, complete in the in the next year or so, and these are all basic infrastructure, like base layer infrastructure uh, projects, which are very unlikely to be funded by uh, by industry. It's, it's so it's if if we ever get it done, then it's thanks to the foundation that we uh, provide this uh, the funding for this. So thank you very thank much. Thank you, Victor. Thank you.